But as I was saying, people, I'm trying to tell you, you always get confirmation. You know, like, uh, this same guy a few, a few uh, months ago, when I first separated from my wife, he's like, I'm praying for you and your wife to get back together. You know what I told him? I said, don't pray that. I said, pray for the Lord's will to be done in my life. I don't know what God wants. I really don't. I'm just being real. You know, sometimes you get people to pray for you and they'll pray for situations and it no one even be what God wants. And he stopped. And now he prays simpler. But I'm like, a lot of times we do that. We'll find out people are going through things. Be like, I pray that Lord, the Lord does this. Do you really know what the Lord wants? You know, do you really know? Do you really know what's really going on in the house? A lot of times people will hear one side of the story. They'll go to a husband and a wife and they'll hear one person's side. And they'll make an assumption. And they'll pray according to that. You know, I don't learn people. I, I like people to pray for me. But if you don't know how to pray, I'd rather you not pray for me. That sounds selfish, right? I read my Bible. He told us how to pray. You understand? Pray simple for me. Because sometimes you can be changing what God's plan is through your prayer life. I done heard stories about people praying for someone to come home and next thing you know, a gun battle comes out and somebody shots fired and all kind of stuff to get them back home. What? Uh, wow. I'm just saying, people, y'all better be careful out here. Don't well, ask everybody to pray for you. Some people don't know how to pray. Some people pray their agenda on you. They will. I don't like certain people praying for me no more. I'm very selfish when it comes to a lot of things. I am. I'm very selfish. And I like that characteristic about me. Somewhat. You know what I'm saying? But you know, the more you read people, the more your understanding is, it changes. I don't think I know better than nobody else. I just look at things because it's like, because one of my major prayers is the Lord's Prayer. You understand? And this, when I pray it and I stick to that, you'll be surprised what happens. I'll be like, I wasn't expecting that to happen, but it happened. You understand? I done found myself praying for in regards to certain things and it don't happen that way. It's like, uh, God hears you. But he's going to do what he wants. Do you know that, right? You know God's going to do what he wants, according to his will. I'm just trying to make, pray that God makes my heart right. So when I pray, my prayer lined up with what he wants. That's why I encourage other people to do. He said, seek first heavenly things and all else will be added to you. And another, another thing I realized about being a follower of Christ, forgiveness. You got to forgive a lot. Because the thing is, you're going to forgive a lot. You're going to let people back in. And certain people are going to hurt you again. Then you're going to do away with them. And then the time is going to pass. You're going to forgive them. You're going to let them back in. Y'all talking about, man, I'm just saying, people. Y'all think a Christian lifestyle is so pieces and cream. Y'all are crazy. I hate to say that, pardon my language. But you are really crazy. You really got it wrong. If you think a Christian life is smooth sailing. The devil is always after us. But God is always after us too. You got to understand, you're fighting against powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, a thought that's been crossed in my head lately is this. Unfinished business. I don't know what it means. But I kind of know what it means. Some things in life you got to close the chapter on. Unfinished business. Unfinished business. You know what that means? God's going to lead you to finish some things. You got to finish this. You got to finish what I begin to you. You remember it said the revelation was like, Go back to your first love. Go back to your first works. God has actually told us to go backwards before. Finish what you started with. 
What? Okay. And the thing is, you remember what I said? All things work together for those that love God who are called according to his purpose. So if God got a purpose for your life, you're going to finish whatever you, he started with you. It's in the scripture. He's going to finish what he started. You ever know, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to tell you something right quick. Everybody who God started to do something and he had a purpose for them to finish it, they finished it. They finished whatever he asked them to do. You do know that, right? Even if they fell away towards the end, they finished. If he had a purpose for them, they finished what he started them to do. And you ain't no different. Whatever work he began with you, you gotta finish it. If you stay keeping the faith. If you pray, and if it's meant for God for you to finish it, and it's meant for God to work through you, you got to finish it anyway. And it's not really up to other people to understand. That's why I always talk about stories like Samson and about that illegitimate judge that people thought was a bastard and they disowned him. And you read the Bible so many times, Gideon. I'm I, I'm the least of my father's house. I, I'm not even. I'm poor. You'll be surprised the excuses people have made when God called them. Moses, Lord have mercy. Moses made up excuse after excuse of reasons <laughs> why he wasn't the one. And sometimes I find myself there doing the same thing. I'm like, Lord, I'm not worthy. I struggle with lust. I do. We live in a world full of beautiful women. I struggle with the lust of the eyes. So I ask for forgiveness in regards to it all the time. I'm just being real, people. I ain't finna lie to you. What's the use? No lie is of God. Oh, you being too truthful. No lie is of God. I'm not going to lie about it. Half of y'all lying about it right now. I help people all the time. I only got eyes for my wife. Okay. So you never looked at another woman in a lustful manner before? All right, then. <laughs> You watch television this day and age. That's all I got to say. You can watch a church program and somebody got on something revealing. Sometimes you can't stop what come across your eyes. Sometimes you can't stop what come across your mind. That's why you pray. That's why Jesus said to look upon a woman and lust after you have committed adultery with her in your heart. So a lot of us have already committed adultery in our heart. Not the actual sexual sin. But that right there. It's not too many people I know that don't struggle with that. I don't care who you are. Now, I believe you can recognize somebody's beauty without being lustful. There's a difference. There is. So, I'm not that lustful all the time. I'm just being honest with you. I'm being honest. That's it. I'm, real, I'm a real human being, people. I'm not condoning it at all. But I'm just a realist. It's talked about in the Bible. Why? Because it is true. It goes on in real life. People struggle with these things in their lives. They do. I don't care who you are. And we live in a world where sexual perversion is running rapid. Everybody has to show everything. You know I'm a man, and you know you're a woman. And if people are walking around with no shirts on and no and short pants on and Daisy Dukes or whatever... You as a man and you as a woman are designed to attract to the opposite sex. Do you, do you know that? That's natural. You understand? That's why God wants to have a wife. That's why I'm so miserable right now. <laughs> I am miserable. It's all right, though. I can go home and do what I want to do. I can eat what I want to eat, cook what I want to cook. But then when I lay down, it's like, this is boring. But it's okay. I trust God. But I hate it. I'd rather have a wife. Like I was talking about a video when a guy was uh, singing in the pulpit. And he said, sometimes I need a little vagina in the church. I'm like, what? Me, I ain't got no filter, no lie. But some things are that you basically advertise it to the whole congregation. That you're horny. But if he was married, I guarantee, I bet he wasn't married. I bet he wasn't married. Well, if he wasn't married, he's supposed to be in the pulpit anyway. 
You wouldn't be talking about I'm horny <laughs> to the congregation. That's basically what he said. I don't care what nobody said. How else am I going to put it? You understand? I'm a realist. I talk about things that most people don't want to talk about. Or they're afraid to talk about. Most preachers are afraid to talk about. Sex. Have y'all read the Song of Solomon? Sex is talked about in the Bible. A lot. And he knew her. <laughs> you know, she knew him. Uh, or whatever. Might not talk say it the way we see it. But it's talked about in a respectable manner. I love the Song of Solomon. I, I told you I'm still waiting on the preacher to do a sermon on the Song of Solomon. I'm, I'm still waiting. I haven't seen one do it yet. Like, the, I don't think people know where it fit in. Like, woo! But he's talking about the love for a husband and wife, so I don't shun songs that talk about love between husband and wife. I don't shun that. I don't think nothing wrong with it. You understand? If it's if that's what it's made for, now people are going to take it and do what they want to do with it. But the song of Solomon about a, a husband and a wife. It's kind of crazy because Solomon had a lot of wives. So I'm like, which one are you talking about? Who are he writing to? <laughs> I'm just, I ask questions. I think I'm like, Lord, uh, which wife is this? Which wife is Solomon talking about? But they going backwards and forwards, man. It's a long poem. You know, I think about that. Like, what is the purpose of this book being in the Bible? Nobody talks about it. A lot of things. You know, I read about the husband chopping up his wife. I'm talking about that the other day. Chopping up his concubine because he actually gave the men who broke into his house, I mean, trying to, the men were trying to sleep with him. He was like, take my wife. Or take my concubine. And they took her and they misused her and abused her all night long. Wow. Ooh. That's horrible. And he was so disgusted by it that he chopped her up and sent her limbs in 12 pieces to the 12 tribes of Israel. And I'm like, that's really messed up, man. Why would God allow that? And then I realized when you go back to that first chapter, people did what they wanted to do during this time. God was not in the forefront of their lives. So you got to read the Bible in a whole different concept sometimes. You're like, oh, 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 oh. They weren't living by the ways of God. They were living by their own imagination. They was doing whatever their heart desired. So if his heart desired to cut his wife up or his concubine up in 12 pieces, he did it. But you know, Lot did something similar. Why you want to sleep with these men? I got two virgin daughters. But the thing is, he's like, man, why would you want to do this detestable thing? I got two girls, daughters here. At least if you're going to sin, please don't do that perversion right there. I got two daughters here. The men were like, no, we want the men. But you got to think about where he was. You know, a lot of people, I would never do that to my daughter. I guess all of us going to die. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know what God's will is for your life. You're going to do whatever God's will is. Just so happened God didn't allow his daughter so nobody to get taken advantage of. Did you see the, the difference in the situations? But you know, it was talking about Micah. Micah had set up a shrine with a bunch of different idols in there. And, uh, and judges. And the people broke in and took his idols and they set up their self God. They set up people to be over their gods, to be over their... Man, it's crazy in the Old Testament. When there's no God, all kinds of things will run around. And it's this day, it's an age, man. Marriage is not as honorable as it used to be. You'll be surprised how many people are married and still living in full-fledged adultery. And think it's okay. No, it's not okay. I don't care how many times I marry and divorce. I'm never going to encourage fornication. Ever. Ever. It's okay. No, it ain't. Pray. That God will make a way. The best way you know how. But the world encourages everything, people. 
They don't want people to turn to God. You know what? You know what I'm talking to you about this right now? Because I go through a lot of things. And I know many other Christians that go through a lot of things. And we talk just like this. Y'all be watching these videos. People just hype men. I'm no hype man. I'm a real man. Breathe, sleep, use the bathroom just like you. You understand? I ain't no different from you. I'm not better than you either. I just like to spread the gospel. Tell me, if I'm I wrong for that? You, you better get yourself right for you. Shut up. I got to get myself right. I probably never get right all the way. I hope I do. But I'm not going to wait till I get myself right to start spreading the gospel. Are you crazy? Why would I do that? That would be stupid. I just It's like people like, I ain't going to go to church yet until I get myself right. I'm just not going to go to church until I get myself right. What? Are you foolish? The devil wants you to do that. <laughs> the devil wants you to be like, once you get right, then he's gonna keep leading you to do stupid stuff that's gonna stop you from ever getting right. The only only being that wanna take the Bible out of your hands is the devil. Think about that. That's the only being that wanna do it. So if, if those thoughts are crossing to your head and somebody throwing that at you, you need to stop doing what you're doing. You know my wife used to tell me that all the time. She said, you ain't perfect, you need to stop preaching the gospel. You need to stop teaching until you get right. You need to focus on me more and preach the Bible to me and don't worry about nobody else until you get me right. I don't think so. There are other people that need the gospel. I don't, I don't, that's why the Bible says you better put him first. Because I can do that. I can just focus on making sure my wife know the gospel. Don't worry about nobody else. Uh, I don't think so. It ain't happening, woman. I believe it's other people God will be minister to besides you. Besides you being selfish. You understand? I believe sometimes God send people to the house to talk to me. And you're so jealous. I can't even talk to them. I believe sometimes God send people to the house sometimes to talk to you. But you're so jealous. Do you understand people? I'm not auditioning myself right now either now. I'm just saying, a God-fearing wife, she got to know how this works. My life don't evolve around my wife. As a pastor. Your life don't evolve around your wife if you're a pastor. Think about it. But I see what Paul says. He's like, you know, a lot of married women focus on more, more of what they can do to please their wives than what they can do to please God. And I understand why that happens because men want to keep their wives happy. Happy wife, happy life. I don't care how happy my wife is if it's, if it's distancing me away from God. Happy God, happy afterlife. How about that? Can you say, say that same? <laughs> I'm not trying to keep my wife happy. I pray for you. Because there's no way I can read your mind and know exactly what you makes you happy all the time. You know, you got to find your joy through the Lord. You can't expect me as your husband to give you the joy that God only can provide. Oh, Lord. Somebody finna tear my head off. I'm telling you the truth. How you expect to be a God got so many plans for you, but you can't preach to nobody else but me. That don't make sense. I'm telling you the truth, man. I ain't got a reason to lie. I don't care. I'm telling you the truth. I ain't going to lie to you. This is what I go through. This is what I go through as a man of God. He said, when a man is weary, give him dry in the dream. My wife make me weary a lot of times. <laughs> I'm finna drink me one. Goop, goop, goop. Then I'm going to preach the gospel the next morning. Or oh, it might be right then. You got a problem with that? Let me ask you, do you have a problem with that? Tell me I'm wrong. If you tell me I'm wrong, you mean you telling me I can't preach the gospel. I can't spread the gospel as a man. But I can tell you that as a woman, though. That's all I got for y'all now, man. I just wanted to give y'all some insight in regards to my life and things that I go through as a follower of Christ. And yes, I am one. Have a blessed day, people. Stay strong. 
step into your purpose. Your purpose, other people may not understand. Your wife might not understand. Your husband may not understand. But I'm going to tell you who understands. The Most High God, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus Christ. Have a blessed one.